then people can just trickle in. And all right, let me see how this works again. Share screen. Screen. Go live. All right. <clears throat> you can see my screen, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, <clears throat> so today, uh, maybe we'll start off with, um, with Danny. Um, so Danny, can you tell me a little bit about this project? Yeah. Um, so getting, getting back into lighting, I wanted to just take a reference and match it. That's what I, that's what I published earlier, I think in the week. Um, and then building on your feedback, I was like, okay, now's, now's the point where I want to actually tell a story and I want to mm. put some feeling into it. Yep. So this one I tried doing like cold versus warm lighting on each side so that each one has a different feeling to it. I see. So is the, the idea, um, to express perhaps the, um, so there's this cool light on the guy, I, yeah. I, I imagine, and then this warm light on the woman, and so yeah. um, that that's quite a contrast in terms of the color, the color temperature and the, the warmth. So I'm guessing that you want to express maybe um, perhaps this this some um, maybe this some sort of disagreement going on, or there's something that is um, Perhaps they're in an argument or something that's not connecting. Is that is that right in my yeah. assumption? Yeah. Right. Okay. So the guy's feeling a little bit cold. So he's um, perhaps he's feeling sad or melancholy or um, yeah, right. disconnected. Disconnected. Right. I see. Okay. So that's um, okay. So that's clear. <clears throat> And what about the woman? Is she, so she's, um, she's got a bit of warm light on her. What, what's the intent of, of how you want to express her? Um, the, the original reference that I got was an interview between okay. two people. So in, in the scene itself, they are closer together. It's supposed to be like a, like a date atmosphere. So I separated them a bit and she on her hand is very, warm and inviting and it seems like she's also talking to the person and the one on the other side is taken back not quite there so she's there to warm and like welcome him into the conversation hmm. uh, he's not quite there yet he's not there yet right gotcha okay and i see um there's like a window shop front out to the street and that's that's actually really beautif beautifully set up um, yeah, I was, uh, so I, I had a look at, um, some references of people s sitting by the window, um, and I might just show them to you. And I think the idea I want to get across is that this idea that, um, when you are shooting from inside pointing out, there's always a discrepancy in the exposure levels of the interior versus the exterior. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wondering, you know, this is at night, so we don't get such a contrast in, um, the different exposure value values from the outside to the inside, but I'm wondering whether you could play on that a little bit and, um, perhaps turn down the light that's hitting him from within the restaurant. So that cool downlight hitting the guy, is that a downlight? Is it pointing downwards or? There, there's, there's, he has one from the top of him. That's yeah. supposed to, that gets also his back, but there's one that's right in front of both of them that hits both. Yep. yep. Gotcha. So I would, um, <clears throat> turn down that fill light that's hitting them both from sort of a frontal, um, direction yeah so try and go for more of a 
I know this is uh, daylight, but I'm wondering whether you could play down the fill and reveal the top light. What I mean is, um, so let me just, so this is just really, so just you know, bring down this fill like that. So this is um, obviously a very exaggerated and, and, but I just wanted to give you give you the sense that if you <clears throat> bring down bring down that fill then your eye starts to um, your eye starts to hone in on their faces a bit more and I think that's what you want you want this kind of connection between them um, and the light, you know, you're <clears throat> pretty much there with the light. I just think that the fill needs to come down so that you, you don't get distracted and perhaps you could maybe flag off yeah. these areas here so that, again, you don't, your eye doesn't get drawn as much. And then... The other thing I was thinking, and perhaps it might be worth trying, is to bring in some area lights from outside. And <clears throat> you can remove the glass when you're rendering these lights. Yeah. But, but try and I was wondering whether you could try maybe getting some sort of rim light on them from the outside and you could do you know make two one one that's kind of cool hitting yeah here, you know or maybe he gets hit in the back here with a cool light instead of his face um so yeah i think that's probably a better idea if you Um, if you could hit him with a cool exterior rim from the back and it might be worth exploring it on this side as well for her but try a few things try a few setups yeah and what this does is it maybe brings in the background and and sort of marries it or connects it with the subjects the foreground subjects and it could just be really subtle like you don't have to you know have them very very intense they could just be sort of little accents of light coming from the outside Does that make sense? Yeah, very much. Yeah, so then... The, the, only, the, the question I would have about that is, if, realistically, would there be, like, two light poles right outside that would give it, or do, or is, like, forget about realism at all? Yeah, so in the context of um, cinema cinematic lighting, I'm, I'm assuming that's what we're doing. Um, yeah. There's... It's um, very rarely does it kind of obey the, the kind of the <laughs> reality or the physics of the scene. So that's why I asked for the, initially why I asked for the emotional intent is that yeah. the lighting um, is used in, in the cinematic context to amplify and heighten the, the emotional um, intensity or the intent of the scene. So you don't have to, you know, it doesn't have to be realistic. You, if you, um, I'll look up some examples. Um, a classic example is um, 
in the movie Munich by Steven Spielberg, there's a lot of scenes where the lighting just doesn't make sense. Like you'll see, <clears throat> you know, you see the light hitting a face, but there's there's no context for where it's coming from. And, but the idea is just to kind of, you know, draw attention to the emotions that the actor's conveying, that's, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't worry too much about, um, yeah. you know, this kind of reality since your scene is obviously to do with kind of emotional, um, this kind of you know, emotional contrast between the, the subjects. Cool. If that makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Turn, yeah. yeah turn down the fill. Yeah. So that you concentrate on their faces and maybe de emphasize the hands and the legs here. And then, yeah, try some accent rim lights. See how you go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And I would probably maybe turn down the intensity of the light that's hitting him because I feel like he, he is a little bit flashed. Um, yeah. Yeah. All righty. But um, thank you. Yeah, it's a great start. Cool. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, who else is here? Ronald, Miguel. Miguel, how are you? I have. Um, Doing good. Yeah, so I have, I saw your update for the bunny rabbit. Yes. Yeah, it's feeling like it's, I see you've replaced the spots with an area light, so you're getting that sort of soft shadow, sort of soft shadow do. on his ears, yeah. How are you liking that? Yes, it turned out a lot better. Um, I was yeah. able to soften the shadows a lot more without adding extra lights for the ears. Yeah, cool. Yeah, area lights uh, are good for sort of those soft, sort of diffuse shadows. I'm a, I'm a big fan of area lights. I'll, I'll always preference them over the spots. The spots uh, have their place, but they're kind of in, you know, cinematic lighting. Um, they are harder to use. Um, and I see that you've got the key to fill, you've adjusted the key to fill ratio somewhat, so that you've turned down the fill levels, uh, on the rabbit, on the bunny, and that feels, that feels better. I'm wondering whether you could maybe move, we crank the key over a little bit so that we can... Um, we can read more of the bunny's face. Okay. Versus the, you can see on this side, there's some, there's kind of that kind of Rembrandt light come wrapping over the face. I'm wondering whether you could maybe try something like that. I know that the bunny's face is a sphere, but perhaps you could get a little bit more a little bit more light on this side okay and let's see and i see that you've got more you know more light on this screen left ear which is feeling a lot nicer and I guess closer to the reference in the reference okay. you'll you'll see that the most intense the most intense light is actually coming from the rim here so see that you've kind of addressed that you might even want to bring it up a little bit more I wouldn't be you could try bringing it up like half a stop. Okay. Makes sense. Just make it a little bit more punchy. And I see you've adjusted the color temperature. So 
let's see, less blue, that looks like more green, more sort of green and warmer colors, which is closer again to the reference than your previous version. So I feel like it's definitely getting closer. Um, yeah, so uh, overall it's, it's, it's looking a lot better than the last iteration. Um, was there anything else that you, um, you were thinking about or that you had concerns in terms of, um, you know, matching it with the reference? No, no, I was, I was just trying to see how close I can get it to the reference. Mm. Um, Okay. Yeah, I think you're pretty close. Um, I would change the color temperature on this rim light to be cooler. Oh, okay. Okay, so a lot more blue. Because I feel like the light that's hitting the person's face here, it's kind of like kind of a yellow, red. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And if you see the, if you look at the, the light that's hitting the person from behind on the rim, it's quite cool. And you'll see here that it's the same from your image. It's kind of the same color, you know, here on the rim as well as the key. So I would try yeah. to adjust the rim light to be cooler. Yeah. But I'd, I'd say, yeah. yeah, just try those things, swing this key around just to get a little bit more, bit more light on the face and then um, check out the intensity and the color temperature of the rim. Maybe introduce a cooler temperature and maybe bring it up by half stop three quarters of a stop. Okay. And then I would say you're pretty much there. Yeah. Yeah. But Thank uh, you. yeah, looking much better. Thank you. All right. We've got Ronald. Hey, Ronald. Hello there. How's it going? Um, doing fine. Thank you. Uh, hope you're doing well as well. I'm doing well, thanks. You're very close with these dings. Oh yeah, uh, I've tried several iterations, and uh, I thought this is as close as I could get. It's <laughs> very close, um, but if you're into it, I'm wondering whether you mm -hmm. can go a little bit further with um, mm -hmm. with the dings. Skewing the right one. Yeah, if you see that, uh, probably zooming into it. Yeah, it's a there's, bit more tilted. There's, to there's the like right. a break up here. There's like a oh. a line that goes through. Uh, those are the eyelashes, I think. Are they eyelashes? Yeah. Oh, I think you're right. Uh, Try replicating that. Uh, yeah. By I Making really, the, I really the, like it though, yeah. even though it's just an eyelash. <laughs> but the, I guess uh, the idea guess... is that you, it doesn't read as like a singular shape. Does that make sense? Like it, it reads more like it's, you know, kind of. Oh yeah, I see. I see what you mean by that. Uh, yeah. yeah, I can incorporate that. Um, and here you see like. I'm mm -hmm. there's something like that. It's very, you know, obviously very crude, but if you look carefully, yeah. see those just little breakups, they actually, when you, when your eye looks at them, you'll pick it up. You'll pick up this kind of depth that you don't get with just the singular shapes. Mm -hmm. um, let me just, I'll do a little, 
Okay. Yeah, I see where you're coming from. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, so just... Just that little breakup, it feels like there's more depth to the eye. But other than that, it's looking pretty sweet. I'm really liking it. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Well done. I'll work on that then. <laughs> yeah, you're almost almost there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Karen, how are you? Doing well. That's good. I did send you another one because... Nuke, well, there's another, I sent a copy, I had to send you a screenshot of it, because for whatever reason, the white walls of the car, hmm. I darkened it, because it seemed like it was like, woo, pointing to those, um, so I darkened it, but for whatever reason, it would not write in Nuke, How, I, I, we, it was weird, so yeah. I'll have to troubleshoot that afterwards. That's okay, let's let's just assume you, you've kind of darkened Yeah, I've darkened it, darkened it up. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so this is looking, you know, miles better than it did last week, just, just by changing the color of that car and, you know, kind of, yeah. And I actually it. have the car scooted back, like you suggested. Hmm. Um, but for whatever reason, when, I, cause it's, it's animated, remember? So when I changed the position, when I rendered it, it reverted back to the, to the keyframes. So I have to, I had to change the keyframe. So it's actually pushed back just a touch. So it's not like as forward, just like you suggested, mm -hmm. but I, it's not in this version, obviously. Yeah. A lot of technical difficulties today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I see you're wrestling with it, but, um, the, yeah, the image looks much better. I see you've addressed the, um, the issue of, too much GI, you know, too much yeah. GI bounce, you know, around here. Uh, on, her, on her behind. <laughs> yep, yeah, on her behind here. It's kind of, that's been addressed. So that's great. Yeah. Um, let me just pull up last week's. Yeah. Oops, sorry. Okay. Yeah, it's much better. Yeah, that car really, there was a lot of renditions of color before I landed on what <laughs> landed on. No, it's a good, it's a good call. And I see you've changed some of the layout, some of the trees have changed. Yeah, they were, they had really bright spots, mm. like they were glowing or something. So I fixed it and yep. it seems to work out. I changed, you said he, the, the guy in the background was kind of, you were gearing toward that. So it just changed the color of his shirt. And I thought that helped yep. a lot. Great. Yeah, it does. And then added some grass for uh, like at the edges of the buildings on the screen, right? By the, yep. the tree. To give that connection between the ground and the building. Nice. Yep. That's that definitely works. And I see you've worked on trying to address the bounce on the guy's face. Yes, I did. Yeah. So you've got. I think I got more, more shape on it. You've definitely managed to get more shape. And how did you go about that? Did you try using the blockers? The, the flags? Or? Um, I did. I had to, had to do some blockers. So coming from the table up, mm. there's a couple of uh, blocker that way. And yeah, there was a couple, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there was a couple of, that I had to kind of adjust um, accordingly. But yeah, I finally got them to where I was like, oh, some shape. But yeah. it was, it was manipulating. <laughs> yeah. No, it looks much better, actually. Yeah, 
he's definitely less flat. He's got more shape. I feel like he's popping out of the screen now. Yep, for sure. I think you could probably go a little bit further with that, um, whether it's a, an area light or a skylight, just to get, you know, maybe a little bit more. Need more? Okay. Yeah, I just added that last minute. I, I added some more light. I can bump that up easy and nuke. So. Yeah, that feels really nice. Cool. Easy fix. Yep. And. Let's see. What else? And did you change the lighting on his uh, that's hitting his back as well? Was that being yes, I did. Did it show up on our thing? I, yeah. I, I made it more wrap around. Yeah, it's looking yeah, much so. nicer. Yeah, I gave him the the defined the back of the chair on his back as well a little bit better because it was not as defined before yep i can see that and the chair is a little bit darker as well oh yeah that was going on oh that's when you when you did my you did the fake uh rim oh yeah if you take off your <laughs> I'm like, why is it so dark? <laughs> that, that's me. That's me. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Sorry about that. Um, yeah. That's that's looking much better. The only thing I can think of at the moment is maybe this area here in the back, the light that's hitting the building. Yeah. Maybe you want to maybe you want to back off on that a little bit because that's starting right. to draw our bright. eye away from him. Him. Yeah. And maybe a little I did bit, notice that too. a little bit more. Uh, and here as well. So maybe back off on the exposure on the buildings. Right. Okay. And you introduced some haze in the background there, yeah? Yeah, and uh, I think yep. it, it brightened it up. I don't know if it brightened it up too much or, or did it dim it down? Yeah, I did something. <laughs> I Like I said, I went through many renditions and I mm. threw it on there. But... No, I, I like it. I like it a lot. I, if anything, I, I would maybe crank it up a little bit more. Okay. Crank up okay. the haze so that we want... So we have a bit more separation of the okay. the foreground characters to the backgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Go go a little bit harder on that haze, and then bring, okay. bring down the sun. The two lights. Yeah, the lights hitting the buildings. Okay. And let's see. Let's check out the light hitting. The guy's head. Did you change the direction or the the type of light that's that's hitting his head? No, his hair. When I when I was zooming in on his hair, his hair had some tweaky, weird. They were pointing out the wrong way. So when you zoomed in, you can tell that the hair was not quite right. So I fixed the hair, but I did fix the light going on it. I kind of dimmed it down a little because it was really it was like oh when i moved the hair it added even more highlights or something it hit it funky yep. i don't know if i need to add more or if it's if i backed it off too much i feel like maybe you backed it off too much because i i really too like, much yeah, yeah i really like the highlights on the previous iteration okay. here so I would it was that sideburn that had a hot spot so i 
dimmed right. it back, but yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll pin it back to block off the sideburn. <laughs> cool. And yeah. the only other thing, just one more thing, is uh -huh. I'm wondering whether you could introduce a flag like right in front of them and have it be, you know, I don't know, 50% transparent or maybe 35 so that you get a darker core. What I mean is you get a darker core like that. Okay. This obviously is totally <laughs> over the top, but I'm wondering whether you could dark, yeah, sort of suck out some of the light in the middle, uh -huh. or the core, and then let it go. Let it go towards normal as we get to the edges of their faces and the back of their head. Okay. I, it's like almost like a vignette of that shadow that's encasing them. Like they're the fill shadow, I guess, or the Yeah, so there is a So yeah. we want to get either um if you have a fill light kind of yeah. you know, behind camera or whatever, maybe turn that down or if the skylight or the sky dome's doing it, then maybe try flagging off so that they're, yeah, so their core is a little bit darker. Okay. Does that make sense? I think, yeah, I think I brought it back because of one, another comment. So I'll just shoot it back the opposite way. Maybe I did too much again. Cool. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So that we're keying in more on their front of their faces. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, but it's it's looking much better. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. All right. So who else have we got? Marlon. Uh, let's see. Marlon. Hello there. Hey, how you doing? Is it okay? Yeah. Uh, have you I just managed to get mine in? Oh, right. Okay. Um, it's a total new one. You see it at the top. It's the very first. Yeah, it's that uh, one. Gotcha. Okay. For the other monster scenes that I'm working on, I'm waiting for them to render. Okay. Wow, that's looking. So this is, so this is, um, as I said before, it's straight out of the render. No compositing done on it. I have uh, a list of stuff I'm gonna do for compositing, like such as rebalancing the lights and everything like that. Because I do the multi light setup when I render. Yep. So I'm going to rebalance all the lights and compositing and everything like that. Add some atmosphere. But so far, that's my raw uh, render of everything from straight from Maya Arnold. Awesome. Yeah, as a, as a general rule, when we're lighting um, and kind of judging the lighting, it's it's good to just submit the raw renders and not try to embellish it too much with, um, you know, compositing post stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is your... Little little vampire dude, little bat. Yeah, it's, yeah. Well, he's one of those char characters from the Light in um, Assets Library for for the course, right? Cool. So, tell me about what's um, what's your intention for this scene? So, so, this is a daytime shot in an old uh, dusty library, I guess. So, the room is large. the The intention is that the light. Uh, he's in that the warm light kind of comes through the window on the side of the library with the sun. Uh, 
Mm. But it's a big room, so you also see in the background that there is other lights on the opposite side, or windows on the opposite side, so you get a cool light into the back where the, the globe and the rest of the library is yeah. right now. Um, my intention in compositing is obviously to balance that that coolness with the dark, with the slash of dark, uh, warm light a bit better in the compositing. Um, but that's the intention. So it's a daytime shot. Uh, but it's a big cavernous library. I put my references in there too. So it's not totally dark, but it's not like a small room where it's super bright inside at daytime. So it is still has some darkness, and I wanted to get that there's uh, windows where you can see the blue of the sky coming through, and then from one side there's like a slash of light uh, kind of highlighting the character more. Cool. And this is your reference, yeah? Yeah, that's the reference that came with the model. Um, mainly just for, for... I'm not really taking too much lighting from that, because I think the reference is based more on a candle, or a nighttime shot with a candle. Um, gotcha. It's more the layout I get from the reference. Mm. Um, it's more the layout kind of idea with the books. My, my thought is that a mysterious guy is there with a bunch of maps in an old library, maybe an explorer or something. I, I, I guess my first uh, response to this is that it feels like this he's kind of completely revealed and there's kind of no mystery to this image. And mm -hmm. I feel like perhaps you could think about, you know, this character, this kind of vampire character and whether you want him to be an open book, you know, Here's, you know, here's Dracula, or do you want him to be um, more of a mysterious figure? And I guess depending on that um, light with that intention. But if your intent is to represent him as more of a mysterious figure, then I'm wondering whether um, you could maybe play or... down, play down that front light or play down lighting up so much for this daytime shot my intent was not to make it mysterious to make him more of a kind of like a hero light hero lighting in the daytime i intend to do a, a nighttime uh version of this mm. where I, i'm going to really push the mysterious character because then i can i can definitely gotcha. up the contrast level and play with it gotcha. and do it like candlelight yep. for the daytime shot i kind of felt like it was i kind of feel like like mysterious characters come out at night so not in the daytime so for daytime shots, I kind of feel like he's a, it's hero lighting that I'm doing on him in the daytime, making him softer. Like it, he's a he's a pretty harsh looking character, uh, could look evil, but I want to make him feel like he's a good guy in the daytime shot here. Yep. So that was my intention of revealing a bit more of him and then having it kind of like that. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so in that case, like that that frontal light, that hero lighting makes sense i'm wondering though whether it's a little bit too frontal um, okay and whether you want to maybe um maybe crank it over to towards screen left so sort of clockwise screen left okay yeah i was trying to get some of that rembrandt lighting type look on his face but it's hard with his uh, shape yeah. of his face yeah yeah um yeah, it just feels a little bit too front lit for me right now. Okay, so bring it around then. Okay. I would, yeah, I would swing it around. So make his put his nose more in shadow, I guess. Yeah, yep. Yeah, I would I would start the fills the sort of the the fill um, the fill light where his nose starts. Um, and yeah, I, I would swing the key light around towards screen left. And I'm wondering whether you want to play with, obviously there's a bit of bounce going on with <clears throat> the light hitting the, you know, uh, the map surface. Yeah. I'm wondering whether you want to do a few tests and place a few bounce lights underneath him to see what you get. Yeah. Oh, it, it, there's already a bounce in there as well, already. Okay. 
So you've you've placed a bounce light in there. Yeah, I have I have a full array of lights: bounce, rim, uh, key, fills. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um... So if you want if more bounce, you could probably bring. I can definitely bring up more bounce. You know what I'd like you to try? I'd yeah. like you to try um, bringing down the key and having the bounce kind of take over. Okay. Does that make sense? So, so it makes sense. So, so kind of like his, he's not directly in the slash of sunlight. It's the, it's the indirect to the bounce that's lighting him from that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So maybe the, the key you swing around, it sort of reads more as a kind of kicker or a rim. And then, yeah. And then the bounce can kind of, maybe the bounce can play. do the shape in. Yeah. Is the one that's sort of primarily shapes him. I'm just wondering because that you know, make him look too bottom lit, and then well, make him look sinister. Well, that's because I could also bring the key around mm -hmm. and then do a wrap light to get the shape in. Yeah, you could try that, but I'm just wondering whether, um, perhaps I'm you know I may be wrong, but that there, there might be a bit more interest in um, how he's lit. Because right now he's kind of like um, okay. Sure I, he, I'll give it sure, a try. Sure, he's hero lit, but it, it's kind of like he is. You know, he is a vampire, and yeah, yeah. You, I, I think if he's like an open book, he sort of reads like. Uh, I guess he reads like a figurine, or as a collectible figure. Oh, rather, like like a doll. Yeah, yeah, like a doll, rather than. Um this kind of deeply complex character, which he is, you know, he's a mysterious character. Okay. So, okay. so that's, that's my, um, that's, that's yeah. where I'm coming from. I'm wondering whether you can maybe add some layers of complexity by not lighting him. So obviously. Um, okay. We can, we can do that. So yeah. swing around and increase the, um, Swing the key around screen left and increase the bounce. Okay. Yeah, see what you get with the bounce. You know, like maybe it's like this kind of hero monster lighting in, in, in some ways. You know, like, yeah. you know, when you monster light something, the light's <clears throat> coming from below. I'm wondering yes. whether you could maybe test that out. It may or may not work. but um, No, it's fine. I can test that out. That yep. works out. Yep. yep. Um, but yeah, otherwise the setups, it's looking really good. Great start. Okay. I'm also going to, uh, work in getting some volumetrics coming in from screen left with that slash of light. I thought that could, that could work. Not, not a, not a heavy amount, but I, he's such a small character. Mm. Figure some floating dust might work right yeah, there. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah. See what um, you get if you, if you move that key lights so that it's hitting that um, that book behind him that's kind of on an angle. <clears throat> okay, so it hits the book a bit more? Yeah, it hits the book a bit more. See see what sort of bounce light you get back from that as well. Oh, okay. The, the key actually does hit the book quite a lot. It's just that it's flagged off. Or I, I don't use flags. I use uh, life, uh, light blockers. So it's yep. light blocked off. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'll go. get a bit more in there. Yeah. So okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Okay. So. Um, who else is here? Justin, do you have anything to show? I don't have anything today. I'm working. I'm working on the basketball shot animation, so I'm just hanging out. Yep, that's all right. No problem. All right. Well, um, I guess uh, if if anyone doesn't have uh, anyone ha has anything else to show, or well, um, maybe we'll just leave it there. Alrighty. Can I ask you a question before we all take off? Yeah. Sure. Um, it's in respect to flagging versus um, using light blockers in CG environments. Because I find that when I use a flag, it's harder to place where exactly... Like in a CG environment, 
it's harder to place and do exactly what I want with a flag. And I'm worried about that the flags cause render time increases, such as when you, um, when you say put a flag and then make it transparent, because then it has to shoot all the rays for the transparent object and calculate a transmission for the render engine, whether yes. you increase the render time, right? Yes. Uh, versus if you just, if you use an Arnold, you can just use a light blocker. I'm sure, I'm not sure like in Katana or in some of the other ones what you do, but... Oh, uh, yeah, so... What's, what if... what's your feeling really on, on that from a technical standpoint, not, not really an artistic standpoint? Yeah, so... Because I know they, they both do the same thing, right? It's just that one might add to render time. Right. Um, yeah, depending on which package you use, like I... Um, I'm just used to using um, uh, Manuka at Weta, and they, um, you know, flags are built to be efficient to the renderer, whereas obviously for Arnold, um, from what you've mentioned, it's it sort of, it does uh, tax the renderer. So just use whatever's, I guess, use whatever's more efficient. It's um, depending on the renderer, I guess. On the renderers you have there, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, can I ask a question, Marlo, about your about the rest? Yes. So in the one you did the 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 book in the background seemed like yes. it was on a different light than that's hitting the rat itself. Were you were you like were you trying to is it is that like is that on purpose? Yeah, that's on purpose. Well, the, the, the hot spot directly behind him, you see there's a slash of light that's on the actual book. Yeah. Um, that's from the key. So that there is, to give the slash of light, there's a light blocker there. Um, do you know what a light blocker is? It's a, it's a shape. Yeah, there's, so, there's, so there's a light blocker giving the slash of light. And it's my intention was to slash it and have a little bit on the book. I wanted to keep gradation down the book from, from the screen top down towards the character, so I didn't want the brightness to bleed up the book. Um, so it's just a slash of light. So it was, yeah, it was intentional to have it there. I also, what I've done is, I since I'm using a light blocker to block the main key, I also want to have a bit of the key bleed, light bleed into the scenes, that the part of the scene that doesn't have the blocker. So I have a, a fill exactly in the same place as the, the key um, with without the blocker on it and the, and the exposure turned down. So that you don't get the pure uh, fill light color in to see in the part without the blocker. You, you see what I'm, does it make sense? That's why you get the screen left. That's why screen left top of the book still is a bit warm compared to screen right part of the book, which is which is really cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ah, cool. Thanks. I was wondering about that. No problem. Light blockers are quite good. I mean, use them a lot. What else? Like when I was at ILM using Xeno, we had lots of stuff like that. The, but it, my concern when I bring it up technically is that when you were when you're at, because I used to be in the industry before, when you're at like Weta and stuff, they're 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 all the engineers have built them to be so efficient. But I find when you use it like in a general package like Maya and they, or Arnold, and then you 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 use like a geometry blocker, and then the the the, the ray tracing engine needs to calculate through it. It adds to the render. And and I mean I'm right now I'm running another scene at full HD on my home computer and it's taking a week, so wow. it's animated. So so that's the reason I'm concerned about the render times because I'm not just doing um, uh, still images, right? So. Uh, yeah. If you're doing animations, then yeah, obviously you have to take that into account like very seriously because it does tax your machine quite a bit. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've just, I mean, I was just assuming that a lot, uh, most people were are working on stills. So, um, but, uh, oh. <laughs> but obviously, if you're, you know, if you're working on animations, then definitely um, consider using light blockers instead of yeah. just your um, your flags. So even for these still images, my intention is to get a bit of camera move. So do some type of camera move to have visual interest than to just have a still, I guess. Because I'm building these for these... My stuff that I'm doing in particular is for uh, my demo reel to get back in the industry. So I'm trying to gear the shots for that, not just... That's why I don't... I find that when I see demo reels made up of nothing but still images, it's, it's I don't know, a little underwhelming. 
So, and I know that some people say that if you just show still images on your demo reel, then they wonder if you photoshopped it, right? Because you, when something's moving, you can't you can't do all those tricks you would do in Photoshop. Right. Well, you know, there's Nuke. <laughs> well, yeah, there's Nuke. Yeah, yeah. there is Nuke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's true. I, I definitely work inside Nuke doing lots of stuff. Anyway, this is just just my feeling on that type of thing. Find out what you would think. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just whatever you know, whatever gets it gets the job done fastest, really. You know, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah, what that's actually very true. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, there's, there's always this deadline. So, yes, no matter yes. what. No very matter true, what the deadline. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a great start. All right. So, um, I think yeah, we'll, thank just wrap, you. we'll just wrap it up there. And um, I'll be back on next week. If you guys want to tune in, most welcome to. Okay, um, I shall be back. Are you doing the next uh, the same time next week? Yes, same time. Yes, it's uh, five Sweet. p.m. Awesome. Five p.m. Perfect. Um, Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. Yep. All righty. Great stuff. Thank, Thank you, you for your comments. Thanks for today. All right, thanks, Thank guys. Hi, everybody. See y'all. See you. Have a good week. Bye. You too.